superstar. This week on Craig Morgan All Access Outdoors, New Zealand. When Greg Ritz called me and asked me if I wanted to go red stag hunting with him, I said absolutely. Good luck tomorrow, Dale. May our arrows fly straight and the weather be good and the hunting great. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Cheers, guys. Helicopter's coming and mingle right here. We've got two helicopters here at Alpine. We've got the Hughes 300, which is my old little beta helicopter I use around here, and this state-of-the-art 520 Nota. Alpine hunting is the only outfitter in New Zealand with your own aircraft. Helicopters are great for our clients, but really it's a mixed bag because I do love to fly. That's drop in vision right there. Oh my god! Yep. Oh! That was a good fish too. Yeah, he didn't go far. He's a, an older bull, in his prime, good strong fish. Good shot, well done. Thank you, buddy. You're watching Craig Morgan, All Access Outdoors. This is my wife, Decla, and I'm Mike, hunting for red stag and fallow deer. And then we're going to go to the South Island for tar and uh, chamois. We spent this morning out looking, and the scenery is just breathtaking, and, and the, the animals are quite abundant. We spent uh, this morning looking at a, quite a few stag, and these are beautiful animals. Hard choice, very hard choice. We've seen a nice stag, and we thought, well, better get ready, organized before we get up there. Smart ones, that's good. Red stag one, hunters <laughs> nothing. Just out again after lunch, uh, um, having a look around, see if we can find that stag. Um, he's not down in this valley behind us here, but. Good shot. Oh, uh, oh, he did a header. I thought he shot over top for a second, but that's ah. just, <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, Beautiful you. shot. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> True. He only gets one chance. Yeah. <laughs> and then she was going to tell on me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Scott Robertson, professional shooter for Beretta. Marcus Luttrell, Navy SEAL. You know, stag are different because there's, there's no two that are exactly alike. They all have different character. There's some with big palmation, there's 
heavy ones, there's wide ones, there's narrow ones, kickers. All of these stags are different and there's so many bulls here. It's just really fun to decide what you're looking for. They all look good to me. Shane has got some just beautiful terrain, just really big hills, uh, some deep canyons and some really neat mesas when you get up on top of these hills. It's unique in the way that you can, you can get up on these cliffs with 1,500 foot vertical drop and actually see the animals. We were glassing and we saw this real nice group of bulls and we glassed for about 30 or 40 minutes. Finally, I think Shane or Bruce finally actually got a glimpse of them down in this valley. Rock and roll, boys. And then we uh, kind of planned our, our stock. We went back around the hill, worked our way up over a ridge, and we made our way in to try and find a place that I could get down and get a good shot. I'm looking. And here comes the rain. It was raining sideways. The wind was blowing. I mean, it was really kind of nasty conditions. You see, he's just about to poke out in that opening, isn't he? I can barely see his tips. Marcus, what range you got? 280. 279. 284, moving. Here we go, take them when you can. All right, here we go. Down. It's a nice ball. Thank you, Bruce. Oh, good stalk, Scott. You'll be nice on your wall. 307 yards, I think, was that your shot in the wind? This is a hard shot. Well, we walked up on this stag, and I mean, you know, he didn't have any ground shrinkage at all. You know, the guy said he's a high-end silver, but I mean, this bull, you know, looked like a 350 class bull to me. I mean, he was just beautiful, ivory tips, real dark horns, which was really neat. Right on, what a nice bull. That is beautiful. Nice ivory tips, you're not broken anywhere. Well done, Scott. Alpine hunting. Uh, comes through again. This has been a great, great trip for me. Good job, buddy. Thanks, man. This is uh, the best summer vacation you never go on. This is just a great place for the whole, the whole New Zealand experience. Alpine hunting is probably the best in the world. They have the best bulls, best people. For the overall experience, it's really hard to beat it. This is gonna look beautiful. With the ivory tips. I'm pumped. Let's go eat breakfast. Because we have our own helicopter, we can hunt longer and harder at any time to get the very best results. We sat around, waited for the weather to, to give us a little break. It finally did, and all of a sudden, Brian got up and said, let's go. Bang, everybody jumps into action. Gave us a little prelim on getting in and out of the helicopter. And you kind of think you know what's going to happen. But let me tell you something, it all changes. Just for the fact that you're in a helicopter in some of those places is, a, is pretty darn exciting. But then on top of that, he was just about ready to say, that's enough, this weather is too bad. They spotted one. Spots it. Lands, we get out. Pretty soon, here we spot the target. He has used the shotgun. Yeah, I took a shot. I think I missed. Use the shotgun. Click the and then I ran a little closer and he Shoot him. get over, walk through a pretty fast little current, get up on a rock to shoot again, and finally shot it, and that was the end of the tarp. All this stuff had happened so fast. Doing everything in maybe 10, 12 minutes from start to finish, but it's the most intense thing you'll ever do. And it turned out to be a real good tarp, about a 12 inch tarp. Today we're going to go chamois hunting because they say there's a bit of a break in the weather and I'm standing here in the rain, but they say it's going to be okay. So we're going to hop in that helicopter and we're going to go chamois hunting. I'm going to get my fingers crossed and hope the weather holds for us for a while.
Left one. Left one. Take me off. Good job. Oh, sick. Ah. He's way over 10 inches on this side. Well done. Super. Thank you. Territories Wild with Tom Moran. It's the beginning of fall in New Zealand and the roaring season for the majestic red deer stags. Introduced to these South Pacific Islands almost two centuries ago, the king's deer has adapted to this lush and fertile land. Bow hunting pro Tom Miranda has traveled to Shane Quinn's alpine hunting adventures to hunt the red stags of the famous Rangatiki River. Together with guide Dave Blaney, Tom will search the rugged Manuka scrub and mountain meadows for a mature big antlered bull. Tom Miranda and guide Dave Blaney have located many well-worn trails and huge rubs made by big red deer stags. Fresh sign is seemingly everywhere to the point that the team must just pick a spot and set up. Look at what these guys have done, Tom. Well, I'll tell you what, they're working over, huh? Oh, What's they, this, a couple days, a week, how long? No, this, this has only been here two days maximum. Um, I've had a tree here before, and you know, you'll go away and you come back and just be a pile of sticks. Hidden in his ground blind, Miranda must stay alert. This valley of the Rangatiki holds many of the top world records for red deer, and a huge stag could step from the thicket at any moment. You know, hunting red stag is a lot like hunting elk. A lot of times, hunters from the east that hunt a lot of whitetails, they go after a bigger animal, and they tend to misjudge the yardage. They tend to shoot under the animal, and it's because the body size is so much bigger. But I can tell you, once you've got your bow hunting skills honed to come down here to the South Pacific, to come to Shane Quinn's and to hunt red stag, it is really the adventure trip of a lifetime. And you're gonna see roaring in March, and you're gonna see a lot of big red stags, and you are gonna have a lot of chances. It's just that when you draw back your bow and you lock in on that pin, you wanna make that one shot count. As evening falls in the mountains near New Zealand's Rangatiki River Valley, bow hunting pro Tom Miranda hides in ambush as huge red stags roar all around him. With the wind whipping up, Tom knows that he must hold out for a bow shot under 30 yards. As a nice stag moves in to rub his antlers in the sticky pine sap, a huge wide red appears on the meadow's edge and begins to walk into Miranda's bow range. Red stags are pretty tough animals. They're big bodied animals. They're not quite as big as an elk, but they're bigger than a mule deer, and you need to have good equipment and you need to know how to use it to make an accurate shot. When you get in these hills in New Zealand, you might only get one good chance at a big stag. And you want to make sure that you make that one shot count. Good hit. He's going down right now. 
He didn't go 80 yards. <laughs> yes! This New Zealand's awesome, isn't it? Shane Quinn's Alpine Hunting Adventures. It's my third time here, and I just keep coming back because it's just incredible red stag hunting. Boy, is there a blood trail through here? <laughs> Look at that big stag. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> He's huge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen pointer. Really wide. I mean, look at my bow, wide wise. <laughs> what a place to come. It's just a short hop in Alpine Hunting Adventures' private plane down to the South Island, where Shane Quinn has another hunting property. And without question, the world's greatest hunting adventure for Tar and Chamois awaits those who make the journey to the Southern Alps. Hunting Chamois and Tar is just unbelievable. Out of the helicopter in that environment, it's just so incredible. <laughs> There's so many dimensions and so many different elements in this type of hunting. You've got the helicopter, you've got the environment. I mean, if I was to trip and fall, I'd, I'd slide 2,000 foot down a hill. I mean, it's serious business. It's coming broadside. Yep, here we go. Take them when you can. Good hit, good hit, Scott. Shane, this is the funnest thing I've ever done. It's the most exciting 30 minutes that I've ever had hunting. There's hunters and then there's other extreme hunters who want to get out and, and kind of test themselves into the unknown, so to speak, man. And if you want to do that, this is the place to go. Glacier hunting, I never thought I'd do that. To have a chance to get on something that I've never seen before in my entire life. Scott went first and was just beside himself. Woo! <laughs> Good job, Scott. That is the funnest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Shane, I'm doing this again for sure. He jumped off that helicopter going, man, this is the greatest thing. Oh, that was awesome. It's just so beautiful, and ice and glaciers and snow and the helicopter going. And I mean, just a 30 minute adrenaline rush. I just wish I could go with you and watch because it is so much fun. It's up there. You know, it wasn't one of those things where we're just running on the ridge line or something like that. I mean, we went over the, the highest peak, dropped down in the valley, and then started scanning for these things. And there was frozen riverbeds, there was a glacier, you know, and the mountains themselves are just so unforgiving. You know, they filmed Lord of the Rings out here, and you, you see that on TV, you think a lot of it's CGI and everything like that, but actually the terrain and, and, and the wildlife and everything they have out here is actually, you know, it's real. We flew around for a while trying to find a good bull. We wanted to get a really good time for Marcus, so I was pretty careful about what we were going to go after. Looking for animals and flying at the same time is just is like a sixth sense. It's, it's a little bit like driving a car and looking out in the fields, but you've got to be a little bit more careful about it than, than just that. We ended up spotting one in a really nasty spot. It was down in some quite steep terrain. We had to go across the valley and get up on a ridge. It was deep powder snow. 
And as soon as we got out of the helicopter, we were literally up to our armpits in powder snow, so it was very difficult for us to move. So they dropped us off on the top of this perch, and the helicopter boogied out of there and went back over to where we saw that tar. Shift across Marcus, so you might better get a shot at him. It'll go soon. Safety off. Marcus the tar rolled down into a real steep-sided creek and we ended up having to go down and use a rope to get it out. Shane was on the rope with the tar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came over and picked me up. Got to well, do what you got to do, Scott. Uh, you know, welcome to Alpine Hunting, because in America, your insurance company would be canceling you. <laughs> yeah. SCI's Expedition Safari. With its breathtaking beauty, New Zealand's North Island is now a haven for adventurists. But for around 80 million years, this remote region lived in total isolation, free from all wildlife with the exception of those that could swim or fly here. Because of their long isolation from the rest of the world, these remote islands offer an array of natural splendors found nowhere else on Earth. A fertile and mountainous landscape hosts an abundance of wildlife, flourishing in the absence of predators. Today, introduced species like the red deer and fallow deer are thriving, virtually free from predation, making this one of the top hunting destinations in the world. You look at these stags here, they're fantastic trophies. I mean, they're beautiful. And here comes one right now. See one coming down. I mean, these guys are incredible in their growth. I mean, they're roaring. So it's awesome time of year. Well, I'm glad they were trying the, the bow. It'll be fun, man. I love bow hunting. Yeah. If I get a chance to do it, I just so seldom get a chance. Yeah. I'm thrilled to get this opportunity. Well, we'll give it a good try today. Will you and Shane make this happen? Now it's just a matter of getting in the right place at the right time. It's almost like a toy. For them, they love to rub, they love to just shine up their antlers, and it's just great to sit back and watch these stag go off on this pine tree. God, he's, he's turning wrong. Just wait, he's turning wrong. Ah, just wait, drop back. You saw him drop back, drop back. Okay. So he stops at 20 yards. He knows something's up, or he seems to be a little wary. And as he stands broadside, I just don't have the shot. I start to draw. I hesitated. And just as I did, he pulled his foot forward and stood and stopped. That's when I finished the draw, came up, felt like I had a perfect shot. Reload. I didn't hit the mark. I was just a little left, a little bit low. It was a killing blow. It would have taken that stag down within a couple of minutes. So I hit, and Trevor says, reload. Should I throw another one out there? Not yet. So I pulled on the quiver, got it ready, knocked it up, came up, and now the deer is about 50 yards away, and he's standing there. This is a shot that I've practiced, but not a whole lot. At this point, you need to finish the job. 51. Ready? Yeah, 51. Oh, good hit. Good hit. Yes. Oh, that's perfect, man. <sighs> Quartered away like that, it's, that's a dead deer. Oh, yes. Unbelievable. Outstanding. Oh, that that was job, amazing. Man. And to get two shots off like that, this, for me, was a big time experience. To use the bow, to get two shots, to hunt with you, to go to New Zealand, to take a red stack. I'm just absolutely thrilled. Well, and I cannot thank you enough. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, Outstanding job. Safari Club International is the largest and most active big game hunting organization worldwide. So it wasn't a surprise to Mike Rogers when he met fellow SCI member and avid hunter Lindsay Lawrence in New Zealand. Knowing that the outfitter Alpine Hunting Adventures was looking to manage their Sika deer population, Mike was able to organize a hunt for Lindsay. That's a huge Sika. 
So we know she's a competent, quality, good shot, but she's now got to use sticks. She's got to shoot uphill at 200 plus yards at a fairly small animal that's standing in the brush and moving quite a bit and not holding still. There's one that's wide open, the other one above him? Above him. I didn't see that guy. I knew if I got seated properly and I had a good rest for my gun, I wasn't worried that I'd pull out the shot, but it's just keeping my excitement, as excited as I was, keeping it down to a minimum so I wasn't getting shaky and breathing heart heavy and... We'll see if you can't get into that opening for us above where we originally saw him. Yep. See that small one? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. He's moving. Do you see the, the little ones? The small ones around. Yep, top one. Top one, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's standing. Now he's moving up through that open? Yep. Okay. And he just stopped. It looks like he's kind of in the shadow there a little bit. Yep. Yep, I'm good. What? Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are a superstar. For a young lady who I underestimated, who I didn't think could make a shot like that, absolutely smoked that shot perfectly. It didn't matter whether it was a rabbit or a Sika deer, she'd hit it. <laughs> it was right on him and I wasn't moving. <laughs> that is uh, that is really <laughs> spectacular <laughs> because that's no easy shot. No. Uphill, a couple hundred yards easy. Oh, and man. with that <laughs> configuration for ha it was to have to place that shot like that. Me out. that Trevor gets very people. excited. If I let him, he yeah. would have rubbed off on me, I think. You and Mike, really I could tell by his breathing, he was <laughs> very excited. But I mean, I was excited they were excited because I knew it was a good Sika, but I just wanted to really keep my calm, pull off the oh, shot, yeah. and then be excited. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's mean. That's something right there. That is incredible. <laughs> Great job. Yeah. That's the one we're looking for, huh? That was the one. Thanks to the generous efforts of Shane Quinn of Alpine Hunting Adventures, a wounded veteran by the name of Jody Parrott is offered a surprise dream hunt after an unfortunate injury and months of rehabilitation. Jody served three tours in Iraq and is very proud of his service, but doesn't often talk about things like the Battle of Fallujah. He was involved in that, was shot and injured, received the Purple Heart. The international community of hunters, people like Shane Quinn, who lives in New Zealand, is so proud to participate with SCI in making hunts like this possible for people like Jody who protect freedom. In Iraq, I was protecting freedom and uh, I worked obviously really hard for it, so it's not something I or my family take for granted. So when I do get an opportunity to come out to a place like this, it, it really means a lot to me and, uh, and also my family, just because of what we've been through. Shane, where, are we hunting just in this area generally? How far does it go? It goes way out to the west over the horizon. Way over there. Then back over the north over the mm -hmm. northern horizon, then way down into the Rangitiki River. We'll just see how much country you guys can cover in the next couple of days. Never know what we might find down no, there, are right? Are you excited at all? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. Stoked. I'm not even shooting. <laughs> I'm stoked. All right, good. I'm ready. Well Let's done, go Jody. get after it. Go and Appreciate get after it. it. Let's do it. It's all because all right. of Shane. Shane, Shane thank you very much. You know, SCI, certainly myself and Jody, we thank you very much. No worries. Awesome. Uh, once we sighted in, we got in the four-wheel vehicles and, and headed up the mountain. We did that because we thought Jody would need that assistance. Turns out that Jody, with his cane, could really get around a lot better than any of us thought. And it wasn't long before we found the stag that Trevor thought would be perfect for Jody. Problem is, that stag was really wary. He's a good-looking stag, isn't he? Yeah. Ooh, there he goes. I don't believe it. Yeah. That stag is wary. When you hunt in New Zealand, you're going to find a lot of different species. One of them is the fallow deer. And when you hunt a fallow deer, you really have to see him from all angles to really know what you're looking at. What's the range? 160. Perfect. You got to be ready, Jody, because the wind swirling and heading up that valley right there. You're going to go right in there. Yep, yep, here he comes, coming straight ahead. There he is. Here. You on him? I got him. You on him? Wait for him to stop. Wait for him to stop. 
Take them when you can. Good shot. Boy, he came out of there like a cracker. Man. Way to stay with me. I don't know if I have the patience anymore about us running thin. Oh my gosh, that was good shooting, Joe. He stopped to look at us for one second, and uh, you know, I just got one good squeeze, and that was it. There it is, man. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Jody made an awesome nice. shot, ended up being a really good deal. It was a beautiful fallow buck, mature, really, really nice hide on it. It was an awesome hunt. Ended up being a good result to a lot of work oh. finding these deer. <laughs> these paddles. Look at that. Well done, good shooting. <laughs> well done. Oh, he's getting up. He's getting up right now. Oh, he's coming straight towards us. You see him? How comfortable are you, Jody? You comfortable? I'm good. We'll let him come out of that brush. There's still dead sticks. We'll let him come out of there. I don't see him, do you? I mean, he's coming straight this way. He's in those dead sticks there, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there he is. Okay. You good? Yeah. Let him come out and get broadside. He's coming broadside. He's covered a lot of distance. How far you figure he is? Okay. 220. 220? 220. You on him? Yeah. Trevor, Ready. your call. Yep, yeah, ma'am. Take him when you can. Ready? Ready. Wild safety, stand by. Okay. Yes. Reload. Reload. Get ready again. Okay, back on him. Get ready again. He's moving away. He looks. He's hit. Definitely. He's hit. Oh, he's hit hard. Maybe Sweet. just a little back. Yep. Yep. Just a little bit. Yeah, but he's gonna go down. He's wavering. Gonna lay really down that way. Down. Yep. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. Man. Man. Woo! Hey, 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 congratulations. Wow. How about that for a stag, huh? Oh my God. Wow. Hey, oh. I got to hand it to our guide. That oh. was a good call. I didn't think it was going to work. I was doubting you. And you know, the patience oh. thing pays off again. This is the biggest stag I've ever seen in my life. When we got down there on him, it was just like he was bigger than what we oh. had been looking at. Look at this guy. <laughs> Dude, you got to get your hands on this antler. Oh, I can't wait. Just to get your hands on those horns and just feel them and just, you know, those things come up over your head is uh, just an amazing thing. This is the most challenging hunt I've ever been on, but when you get to do this, that's what makes it worthwhile, uh, you know? It's a pretty awesome trophy, isn't it? Man. The whole New Zealand experience is probably the best in the world. One of the most beautiful places I've ever hunted anywhere in the world. This place is amazing, man. I mean, this terrain itself, you know, definitely is Lord of the Rings type stuff out here. That is the funnest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I mean, Shane Quinn at Alpine Hunting really has one of the best commercial operations that I've ever seen of any type hunting anywhere. Alpine Hunting leaving out of gate one. I mean, Shane has his own plane, two helicopters, two ranches. I mean, it is a first-class operation from start to finish. You're going to see a lot of animals, tremendous scenery, lots of snow, lots of action, lots of flying, lots of mountains. For the overall experience to come down and experience New Zealand, to hunt huge animals, to get to hunt in all different types of terrain, uh, it's, it's really the best that I've, I've ever seen. Alpine Hunting Adventures has properties on both the North and South Islands, offering the best hunting from one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Golly, that's incredible. That's a great, that's a great idea coming down here. It's a great idea. I knew you'd love this place. It's just, it's like nowhere else in the world. They've killed five bulls this year in the 500 range, several in the 400 range. So if you're looking for a big stag, Alpine hunting is the best in the world. I was truly excited to get out and, and, and see what this place had to offer. Shane's so good at what he does, you know, he's been doing this for a long time. He's just like, you want to see a monster? He's like, we'll go see a monster. And he drove us down over this ridge line. We panned around a while and all of a sudden this big 440 class stag walks out. This is what you said you wanted, heavy with trash. 
Oh, he dropped him. Great shot. Dropped him on his tracks. My favorite animal to hunt in the world is a mule deer, but being out here and hunting those red stag, I think uh, I got a new number one. David and I decided that we would go set up a blind for the next day's hunt. That's 20 yards. We're ready for in the morning. looking at us. We had a fallow deer. I mean, it couldn't, a fallow deer couldn't have been 15 feet from us right there. Two uh, stags right here, the one I shot, and another one below him. <sighs> Boy, stag right there. There it is, buddy. Yeah. Well done. Awesome, awesome. Beautiful. Boy, he's wide, ain't he? Very wide. That is unbelievable. New Zealand is a destination that everybody has to visit once in your life. That stag is just over the edge. We can sneak down another 20, 30 yards. I think we can pretty good. Okay. Okay. the bolt, I buried the crosshairs right on the point of their shoulder, squeezed off another round, and just crushed them to the ground. <laughs> I got him. That is a giant stag. Look at the size of the stag. Isn't that incredible? He crowns here up with the top, traditional for a red stag. Split three on this side, incredible mass. Just an unbelievable animal. It's New Zealand's North Island, where Scott and Wendy Robertson are out with Shane Quinn's Alpine Hunting. This place has a lot more to offer than just big game type hunting. I mean, the fishing is as good as anywhere in the world. And we had the opportunity to go trout fishing in a stream that was probably the most beautiful stream I've ever seen. Wow, look at that river. There was no place in the river where you couldn't see the fish and see the bottom. I'm looking at some four or five pounders, so this ought to be really cool. I've always wanted to trout fish in New Zealand. <laughs> and I hooked about a five or six pound trout, probably the biggest trout I've ever caught. Look at that New Zealand rainbow, baby! Go find me a stag. I 
hunter can come here and hunt with us and he can take all the New Zealand species, which is basically 10 species while he's on a hunt here. Alpine hunting in New Zealand is a great option for a Midwestern hunt. You know, by the time you add the expenses of a tag and airfares onto a Colorado elk hunt, that's going to work out to about the same as the airfare from the Midwest to uh, down here in New Zealand, which is about $1,500. You know what I'm looking for? You're looking for something gnarly and funky with kickers or droppers, mass, multiple points, shiny and clean at bargain basement prices. <laughs> yeah, but much, wait, there's more. <laughs> that pretty much does sum it up. I'm, I'm glad you've been listening, man. David and I had been looking at some animals for three or four days. Um, on like the second or third day though, we did see a particular stag. As we were coming up in a valley, he kind of went over the hill and I just got a little glimpse of him. I could see that he had a, a, a turn down time. And there was another stag that we saw earlier in the week that had a real long kicker off the side. And that stag also was what I was looking for. We couldn't have walked up on an animal any more perfect than that. He was right there, uh, 100 yards, almost straight down. I could hear this raking noise. I could hear something being torn apart. Huge stag. Where is he? He's just down there, raking up the bush. Just, that's the same guy we've been looking for. Is that that's the big guy with the down, downturn bay. That's the downturn horn. And the problem is, is where we were, we we're kind of up above him and he was tearing a tree and there was a bush right in between us. So I didn't have a shot. Why don't we crawl out to that point on that rock above him? We worked our way out on these rocks and I still didn't have a shot. He has crowns. You could eat cereal out of things. So the animal finally gets away from that tree that he's been, um, that he's been tearing apart and he walks behind it and he sits down. He laid down or what, what's he doing? Yeah, he laid down. Yeah, he came out. He finally, spook and he kind of pushed straight away from us and he was about 100 and 125 yards below us. I mean I had a great shot as far as distance but he never presented himself right to me and I just didn't feel right about the whole situation. I mean I didn't really want to shoot that shot straight away. It's not the, the most ethical shot and I sure the heck didn't want to wound this animal at all. All he was giving us was the Texas heart shot. As the stag pushed out he knew exactly where he needed to be to not give me the shot. I mean I just needed a little bit of angle but he just wouldn't give it to me. Here's your boy. Shot. He needs to turn. Oh, stop, stop. And he just kept going, kept going, and he pushed right off the hill where we had no shot. We thought he was gone, so we just waited there a minute. After about four or five minutes, he came up the other side, and then he turned broadside to me. Let me range him. 213. 213. All right, here it goes. Good hit. Oh, Golly, he can take it. And I made a really good shot. I made a good squeeze. I knew I was on it. I heard the meat shot. But man, he took it like a champ. I love it when a plane comes together. Well Thanks, done, man. Sir. Hey, Appreciate good it. Good shot, baby. Mm, awesome. You. When I walked up to him, I knew when I saw him laying down, geez, this bull is definitely over 400. Look at how heavy he is. I mean, that can't get both hands around that. <laughs> you hook up the helicopter and carry him home. That's the best part of this whole deal. This is about as wild and raw as it gets. New Zealand is the real deal. And to get to come to a place like New Zealand and alpine hunting and get to stomp around these mountains and fly in helicopters and ride on the rangers and do all the things that they do and the overall experience here at Alpine is just, you know, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I mean, this is as good as it gets for a guy like me. 
There's going on down this road. I was going to go to the place we call Windy Point. They named a point after me, and that is so cool. Not Windy Point, Windy Point. We got over there, we sat down for five or ten minutes or so, looking around, glassing. We were looking at some smaller fallow off the edge, kind of over on the left-hand side. We're glassing the bottom of this valley. We see a couple fallow and everything, and that kind of gets our attention. And so we sit in for a minute, we glass, and sure enough, uh, we spot a good stag way down in the, in the bottom of this canyon. Okay, he's looking like he might want to stand up. Well, the thing about it is, we're, it's downhill. So at 300, you, you could hold the main crosshairs, and that bullet's not going to drop that much. Let me range him for you. Okay. All right, 339 yards. Four inches below the top of his shoulder, main crosshairs. Take your shot, nice and smooth. Oh my gosh! Unbelievable! Wow! My feet fell out from underneath him. He was just... Oh my gosh, honey, you couldn't have done any better than that right there. Oh, man. I am proud of you. Yeah, oh my God. Wow, that was incredible. And as soon as I looked through the scope, I knew, I knew I could make the shot. I knew it. There was no question in my mind. I knew he was going down. You know what? There's a couple of places that you just can't come back once, and this is one of them. This is a place that once you come here, uh, you're gonna be trying to figure out how to get back here. And Winnie and I have had the time of our life. This has been a wonderful hunt. All the people at Alpine Hunting have been great. A hunter can come here and hunt with us, and he can take all the New Zealand species, which is basically 10 species while he's on a hunt here. If you compare any trophy hunt in the US, New Zealand's a real bargain, because you get to see some new scenery, you get to meet some great new people, and you get to experience a whole new country and lifestyle. I think we have got a little piece of paradise down here. People come down here don't really know what to expect. Once they get here, they don't want to go home. This place is just like I had imagined. This is as cool as it gets. New Zealand is, it's not what I expected it to be. It's beyond what I expected it to be. Winnie and I have had the time of our life. This has been a wonderful hunt. All the people at Alpine Hunting have been great. And they really do a great job and they make you feel like part of the family. And like David said, you know, you come here as hunters and you leave as friends. <laughs>